The main topic today is going to cover the tips and tricks that I've implemented to get my utility bills down. We're going to start with the electric bill. After I had that $200 plus electric bill that we talked about in the story, something changed in the summer of 2023. My utility bill provider shifted from a more or less flat rate that kind of varied depending on your usage for electricity to a time dependent rate where they charge you more during peak hours and less during off hours. And as you can see here, the maximum electric bill that we had during the summer did not exceed $180 and didn't get anywhere close to the 200 from the year prior. And I attribute that to us signing up for this particular plan for time dependent billing. You see, during most off peak hours in the summer, they charge 10 cents a kilowatt hour here where I live. But from the hours of 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., they charge this 38 cents per kilowatt. This is a graph from a recent day that we had, and you can see that the amount of money that we're being billed for electricity spikes sometime afternoon. What we've done is set the thermostat to a low point for the afternoon up to 4 p.m. You see, at 4 p.m., I schedule the thermostats to basically raise the set temperature up quite a bit, and I let the house coast and warm up between 4 and 8. Then, at 8 o'clock, the AC kicks on and gets the temperature of the house back down for the evening for us to sleep. I personally like the house being a little colder when I'm sleeping. And the AC is the biggest consumer of electricity for my house. So just simply changing that, even though I'm being billed more than three, almost four times per kilowatt hour here, the actual billing over that time is relatively low. Another thing we try to avoid during 4 to 8 p.m. is cooking. Amanda stays home with the babies and I work from home. so. She's able to do the bulk of the cooking in the summer for lunch, and then we heat up leftovers or have something that doesn't require turning on a electricity-dependent appliance for dinner, at least not one that consumes a lot of electricity. And if we do, something like this can happen, where we end up with a large spike. As you know, it's not always possible to avoid running particular appliances depending on plans, so this does happen every once in a while, but ultimately, it's still got our bill down. Just check out this comparison. Before, my high electric bill was over $200. Now, it capped out at 160 after changing this plan. The low is the same at 55. That kind of makes sense. But the average is down 10%. So simply changing our behavior and taking advantage of the time-dependent billing saves us 10% on our electric bill, or $120 per year in my case. It may not seem like a lot. But getting that maximum bill down in the summer really does help our budget when things are tight. Now, this visual might seem a little bit intimidating, but I just want to quickly say that my electric company offers four different types of time-dependent billings. The first one is the default time-based plan, and that's going to be representative of this graph up here. This is very similar to the way that they used to charge. The next plan is the summer peak time based plan. And this is the plan that I use where they charge 38 cents a kilowatt hour between four and eight for summer. And now summer is June to September. And the other hours are 10 cents a kilowatt hour. And I forgot to mention, they don't do the peak hours during the weekends because those peak hours are normally dependent upon people coming home from work. And then during the months between October and May, you see a six cents per kilowatt hour between 12 and 6 p.m. and 11 cents a kilowatt hour for the rest of the day. The nights and weekend plan is similar, but a little different. In the nights and weekend plan here, you see six cents a kilowatt hour between midnight and 6 a.m. regardless of the time of year. You see 34 cents a kilowatt hour during those peak hours in the summer. The base hours for weekends and the weekdays are now 11 instead of 10 cents a kilowatt hour, but you do get that drop at 12 to 6, which is good if you have an EV. And those non-summer months still have a premium charge for the hours between 4 and 8, but it's not as much as it was in the plan that I picked. It's only 28 cents a kilowatt hour as opposed to almost 40. And the last plan they have is the nights and weekends max plan, which effectively is designed just to get the price between midnight and 6 a.m. really, really, really low. And this is the plan that they market to the EV owners because you can really charge your vehicle on the cheap when the pressure on the grid for producing electricity is at its lowest. Now, this was the biggest thing that we did to get our electric bill down in order to save money on our utilities. This involved getting a programmable thermostat as the one that we had in our house for the lower level was not programmable and sacrificing some of our behaviors and scheduling in order to accommodate one of these that best fit us. 
Each one of these plans could probably maximize your savings depending on your lifestyle and depending on what you can do with your thermostat and managing your activities. Now to finish up the main topic, I want to cover two more major tips that I think are valuable for any homeowner to implement in their easy. The first is going to be replace the air filters in your HVAC unit. You see the air filters as they plug up with dust restrict airflow. And the fan that circulates air is not only going to be circulating more dust, but it's going to have to work much harder in order to circulate the air. It's going to reduce the airflow moving through your house, meaning that ultimately your heating and cooling become less efficient. And your fan is going to be drawing a lot more power, consuming more of your money in order to just try to keep up with the heating or cooling. I personally try to replace the air filters in our units once every three to four months. Typically when everyone gets a little bit extra sneezy, that's a sign that I should probably check the filters. I've also found that at certain hardware stores where I like to buy air filters, they do give a discount if you buy them in bulk. So I'll get an extra good deal by buying multiple at a time and not having to go back to the store but like once or twice a year. Okay, now time for my last tip, and this is one that you should really think about. If you're a homeowner, you probably have a condenser unit for your HVAC if you live in an area that gets very hot in the summer. These condenser units work by running coolant through these fins that are on the side, the metal fins. And there's a fan that blows air through. Just like your air filter, those can get plugged up with dust. You can see in these pictures, they're nasty. Like really, really nasty. Truly, it's a good idea to clean your condenser units once a year, maybe once every other year. Just take the top off, get your hose, not a pressure washer. You don't want to use something with a lot of pressure because you don't want to bend the fins and spray from the inside out to get the dust out of the unit. This will increase airflow and increase the efficiency of the unit. The interior coil is going to be able to reach a lower temperature and increase how quickly your unit can cool the home. And if you have a heat pump, that uses one of these for heating, it can also improve the efficiency of your heating during the winter. You remember that really high electric bill I had early on? Well, shortly after moving into the home, we cleaned the condenser units and saw a massive increase in efficiency and a reduction in our electric bill. You can go back to the graphs and kind of see it. I don't remember exactly where it was, but I do recall recognizing the benefit of this particular maintenance effort on our monthly budget. There's one more thing that I did do for my heating bill, even though you don't really see the benefit this year over last year. And that is that I replaced that really old furnace in the basement with a high efficiency furnace. It went from being 80-ish percent efficient for the amount of gas that was burned to being over 90% efficient for the gas that was being burned. Unfortunately, with inflation, the price per unit of gas went way up, but our bill maintained steady because we had changed the furnace out. And with that, I want to know what tips and tricks do you have for saving on your utility bills that I did not cover today? If you're listening on a platform that has a comment section, please leave them there for every Hopefield follower to be inspired. And with that, until next week, until next Tuesday, budget bravely and enjoy your Hopefield financial future. Mm -hmm.